I am reminding about something that you learned back in grade 12 advanced functions. This would be the composite functions, combining functions unit. And that is where you have f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 4x6 plus 5. You can find f of the g of x. And what that means is, let's grab my stylus here, is that I'm putting the g function inside of the f function. The g function in this case is the 4x to the power of 6 plus 5. I'm putting that inside of the x squared function. So it's going to look like this. It's going to look like 4 x to the power of 6 plus 5 raised to the power of 2. So that's putting this function inside of the x squared function. So it just becomes a 4x to the power of 6 plus 5 to the power of 2. That's different than if I was going the other way, which is to say, if I wanted to find the g of the f of x, it means putting the f function inside of the g function. So that would become this, 4 times x squared to the power of 6 plus 5. Okay, big difference. All right, so it's not like the order in which I do the composition doesn't matter because it does, right? As you can see, I'm putting the x squared function inside of the 4x to the power of 6 plus 5. In the second case, in the first case, what I did is I put the 4x to the power of 6 plus 5 inside of the x squared function. So that's the difference between those two. Okay, now I'm going to go over to my second board. Right? And again, just stick with me in the Google Meet because all of this will come up on your board later on so that you can certainly download it for yourself. And you can even make notes as you go along. So if you want to slip over to the board to write anything down that I say, then you're welcome to do that because it is only your board. Are you still going to be uploading the lessons to the YouTube? Yes, Ariana. So that's still part of what I'm doing. So even though I'm doing this, I'm giving you another way that you can go back and review what we did in class. So yes, the, the videos are there. I know some of you do use the videos, I think anyway, because I do see a, you know the couple of hits that I get from it. But here's another way that you can download the stuff for yourself if you wish for the actual notes of the class. Okay. So let's get now to what this chain rule is when you have composite functions. And here's what the chain rule says. If the two functions, f and g, like the ones I had before, are differentiable functions, and the composite f um, function, f of g of x, has a derivative as follows, and you can see what it says there. You take the g of x function, right, f of the g of x function, and multiply it by the g of x function. And that is equivalent to, in Leibniz notation, taking dy du and multiplying it by du dx, and what happens is that essentially you end up with, when you cancel out the du's, you end up with dy dx. That's really what we're after here. So I know this still sounds a little funny, like I'm not sure how this actually works in principle, but that's essentially what's going on in the background. If I make one function a function of u and the other function is a function of x, and I can take the derivative with respect to y of u, Sorry, the root of respect to u of y, they take the du dx and multiply those two together. Essentially, it, gets, it ends up being dy dx. Okay, so let's get to where this can actually make more sense. I'm going to go to my third board now. So if I had, oh, I think you can hardly see this at the top here. Let me see if I can bring this down. Hold on. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Let me take that away. Well, um, I'm trying to show you. Oh, here we go. Perfect. All right. I, I wasn't at the top of the function. That's why you couldn't see what was going on. So the example is y equals 3x squared minus 2x to the power of 5. Now, we did do something like this before when you're looking at the product law. But let me, let me put it to you in a different way now. If I made y equals to u to the power of 5, right? If u was equal to the 3x squared minus 2x, I'm making a substitution here. I'm saying that the u is this inside function right here. So if that's the u function, then, then the y is equal to u to the power of 5, right? I could make this become is equal to u to the power of 5. Because u, we said, I don't know why I'm not able to write there. Because u, we're saying, is this thing here, 3x squared minus 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take dy du. And dy du is this thing right here. That's the 5u to the power of 4. Because remember, if y is equal to u to the power of 5, 
that if I were to differentiate dy with respect to u, that's just equal to 5x to the power of 4. That's all that is. That's a terrible looking x there. Let me quickly get my eraser. And sorry, folks, where is my eraser? There is my eraser there. And let me sort of tidy that up a little bit. OK, so let's try that again. So 5x to the power of 4, that's that. So, sorry, 5u to the power of 4, not x. I'm still making mistakes. Let me fix that. So that should be u. So 5u to the power of 4, which is what this thing is saying right here. Then I could take du dx. So du, now remember now, this is the, the u function is this function right here. So I could easily differentiate the u function. So the next function is a du dx, right, which is differentiating this function that I just um, on or put a little box around. And that would just be equal to 6x minus 2. So really all I need to do now is multiply these two things together. So I'm going to multiply the 5u4 and the 6x minus 2. So here's my 6x minus 2. And here's my 5u4. But what I've done is the 5u4, I changed the u back to what u was in the first place, the 3x squared minus 2x. All right, so that's the derivative of the outer function. That's the derivative of the inner function right there. So we derive the, the, the inner function and multiply that by the derivative of the outer function. And then we make that substitution back again if we want to make it in terms of just in terms of x. Okay? All right, so what does that look like on my next page? Let's try a question that is exactly that. So let's apply this chain rule. The chain rule says, and I'm going to do it without having to do it in two stages. We can, actually, we'll do it in two stages. If I make u equal to x squared minus 5, that's my u, then I can find my du uh, dx. That's the, that's the inside function, which is, of course, 2x. Uh, actually, just 2x, right? And my dy by du function would be equal to 7u to the power of 6. Okay? So 7u to the power of 6 is my dy, my du, right? And my du dx is my 2x. So my final function, which is my, my call it f of x, f prime of x function, is therefore equal to the 7 u to the power of 6. And we know that u was x squared minus 5. So x squared minus 5 to the power of 6 and multiply that by the inside, which is the 2x. There is your derivative. So I derive the u function to give me 7u to the power of 6 or my 7u to the power of 6. Here's my u still there, but then I have to multiply it by the inside derivative, which is just the 2x. And that's it. That's all it is. That's all. It's as easy as that. Okay. Is that good so far? I mean, we have done this with the product law before. Adam, does that sort of make sense? You remember, does that look familiar to you? Adam, how about you? Does that first one look like it might be something that we've done before? Perfect. Okay. Let's try another one. Applying the chain rule again. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the H, and that's not an H at all, that's an F. Let's change that to an H. The H prime of X, again, I'm not going to do it in two series again, would be equal to the 3 over 2 times the X squared plus X to the power of a half, because that would be what 3 over 2 minus 1 is, multiplied by the inside function, which is 2X plus 1. As easy as that. Now, I could, of course, write that as a square root. We know that to the power of a half means it's a square root. So I could do that as 3 over 2 square root of x squared plus x. And then I'm multiplying all of that. In fact, I'll do this. Multiply all of that by 2x plus 1. There's my derivative. Wait, sorry for the last one. Where did the 7 u to the power of 6 come from? Ariana is asking. Sure, let's go back and quickly look at that. 
So this was this thing here. Okay, so my 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 u function, right? I'm saying let u be equal to uh, so seven, so x squared minus five. So if I have to differentiate the outside one, the outside one, it's, think about this as being x to the power of seven. Let's 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 do a quick thing down here. Let's go down a bit here. If I had u to the power of seven, Ariana, wouldn't that be seven u six when I differentiate that? Isn't that what that is? Oh, you get it. Okay, perfect. All right. So so far, this is really not that hard, and your homework is exactly about what I just did. All right. So here's my derivative. It's done. All right. So I differentiate the outside function and multiply it by the root of the inside function, two x plus one, and that's it. I just all I did here is just made this into a square root just to make it look a little bit more like what we're maybe accustomed to. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for this one, I'm going to demonstrate to you that sometimes it isn't necessary to simplify it as much as you think you need to. So the first function they give you as being y equals u q plus 2 u plus 1, where u is equal to this, 2 times the square root of x. So one function is a function of u, and one function is a, fu uh, a, fu a function of, uh, with u in it, and this one is a function of x. And what they want is a dy dx. Well, let me remind you that to get my dy dx, I'm going to take my du, sorry, dy du, and I'm going to multiply it by du dx. All right, I showed you that a few minutes ago. So dy du, that's a d. It doesn't look like it, but it is. Eventually, it's going to get me dy dx, which is really what I want. So what do I mean by dy du? That's meaning, that means this function here is my dy du. So that would be equal to, taking that, that would be 3u squared minus 2, right? That's, that's all that is. That's my dy du. And I'm going to multiply that by du, d, 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 the second function, that's the u function here. I want to get this one. Now, so this one here, remember now, is the same thing as saying 2 times x to the power of a half. Remind you of that. Square root of x means x to the power of a half. So if I'm differentiating that one, so this is my du. Remember, that's my u function. And I'm going to take du dx now. So this, a half times 2, which is just going to give me 1. So x to the power of minus a half is what that is. And of course, just, you know, we, we know this already, that th this could really be written as this, 3u squared minus 2 over the square root of x, right? Okay, have I lost anybody? Did I leave anybody behind here? Just want to make sure that we're all following. Brain, how about you? Does that make sense so far? Let me know that... You're there, and that, that made sense. Braden, how about you? Okay, good. Okay, now the question is, though, what is the value of dy dx when x is equal to 4? Okay, but this is not a function. Now, now we could plug in the u here. I remember the u was equal to the 2 root x. That's what the u is. The u is equal to 2 root x. We could plug that in here, which is... One way to do it. But how about if I just said, look, I don't really need to simplify this. All I'm asking for is what is the value of the function when x is equal to 4? But this function has both u and x in it. I can put 4 into this. So by the way, this is my dy dx function. Well, it's not really dy dx, to be honest with you, because dy dx would only have x in it and y. This is a u function. So what I could do is I could actually find out. But, but the thing is, I need, to, I need to know what to plug in for u. Now, let me remind you what it says here, that u, put on the side over here, that u is equal to 2 square root of x. So we're trying to do this for when x is equal to 4. So shouldn't we, therefore, try to figure out what u is when x is 4? So I'm going to do that right now. So u is equal to 2 times the square root of 4. All right, so when x is equal to 4. Therefore, u is equal to 2 times essentially 2, which, of course, is 4. So when x is 4, it turns out that u is also 4. So for me to calculate this, now I'm going to put that into this function. So it's 3 times 4 squared minus 2 
divided by the square root of, remember what we're doing this when x is 4? 4. So it wasn't necessary for me to simplify this. So all I really need to do, can I go over it? Okay. Yeah, sure I can, Ariana. I sure can. And thank you for slowing me down. So all I'm saying here is this. This question was asking me for, come up the side here, for when dy dx, and this is this is really my dy dx, right? This, this is really my, even though it has a u in it, is really my dy dx. Because remember, my dy dx is my du, sorry, dy du. This is my dy du right here, 3u squared minus 2. This is my du dx over here, the um, x to the minus a half. Okay, does that part, oh, sorry, are you good with that? No, is that, does that make, okay, all right. So all I'm doing now is trying to figure out, it asks when x is equal to 4. Well, I just need to figure out what to put in, in a function that has a u in it, for when x is 4. So I just put that over here. I said u is equal to 2 times when x is 4. Works out to be that, it, that u is also 4 when x is 4. So I plug in the 4 now for the x, and I plug in the 4 for the u. So I just need to finish calculating this, and I'll stop after I do this. So this would be 3 times, what is that, 16 minus 2 divided by 2. And I'm thinking that would be 48 minus 2 is 46 divided by 2, which is 23. So there is my value of dy dx. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Alexander is always just making me look bad. Like I'm like he's Usain Bolt and I am I don't know who I am. I mean, I'm the Jamaican here, but it looks like he's the guy who is out running the others. But anyway, so 23 would be what dy dx is when x is equal to 4. All right. So I'm actually going to leave it there because we're coming up to the 2 o'clock. Oh, I have.